Here's the question, and, and, it, and it's a good one. Why do hurricanes and tornadoes form in certain months? A lot of it has to do with where you are in the meteorological year and what your part of the world, what your atmosphere at that point is doing versus others. Yeah, really, um, very simply, like with the with hurricanes or hurricanes, tropical storms, any kind of tropical feature, pretty much um, they are uh, an entity. They're, they're a phenomena that happens over water. They form, they don't form like over, you know, North Dakota or in the center of the uh, of a continent somewhere where it's landlocked. They form over water and over warm water. And the key number, the magic number you have to look for there in Fahrenheit is about 80 degrees. Uh, that's the magic number. Now think about it. Uh, do you have 80 degree water temperature off the Jersey shore in January? No way, no way, not even close. Uh, or even off of Myrtle Beach or, you know, uh, so even off of Florida. Uh, yeah, it's a warm water, it's Southern Florida, but it's not 80 at that point. Maybe down farther south it is, but then you have other factors. So water temperature is really key. And that's why, you know, your hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, for example, is, you know, you're starting around June 1st, or now they're talking about bumping it to May 15th, and then going till the end of, of uh, November. And so that's when the water typically is, is the warmest. And it really spikes up there in late summer now, you know, mid-August on through September when the water is at its absolute warmest. So that's really the key thing. And of course, Northern Hemisphere, that's what it is. Southern Hemisphere, it's just the opposite. Their time for hurricanes, you know, tropical systems is in our winter. That's their summer. Danielle, I guess the question then too would be, if you look at it this way, to the point that Dave just made, a hurricane starts over water and then eventually comes over land and interacts with land and it can change the dynamics of the system. Tornadoes can happen either way. I mean, there can be a land started a tornado that becomes a water spout because it goes over water or vice versa. It's a water spout over water. And then as soon as it comes on land, it becomes a tornado. I guess more so uh, for us in the, in the United States, why do we have a tendency to see tornadoes mostly in the spring and summer, not so much in the winter? I don't think it's as much temperature driven as the hurricane situation is. Right, right. I was going to say you're not quite as, uh, you know, limited in terms of, of the factors there. And, you know, when we start getting into, you know, again, the, the spring months or so with regards to tornadoes, we start to get larger thunderstorms developing, you kind of get more significant air mass clashes, so to speak. So there's still a little bit of a temperature kind of factor in there, depending on it on exactly the setup or so, but you start to see kind of stronger systems colliding with more warm, moist air. So you start to get more instability, lift, again, you got moisture, those are the three ingredients we look for, for starting to see thunderstorm development. And we start to see kind of those clashes a lot too, in particular across uh, the central part of the country, you know, a lot of places, a lot of that area is still considered to be tornado alley. And then from there, with that thunderstorm development, you start to see kind of, you know, the atmosphere becoming, I guess, if you want to say agitated, start getting spins and kind of going back to what we talked about with the rain formation too. Once you get that lift and kind of lift that spinning motion up, that's when you start to look for that tornado formation to form. So uh, again, you got kind of multiple processes at play or so that can result in that. That's kind of more of the, the more common one, but you're not quite as limited again, as Dave said, with regards to, to just a temperature factor alone there. Yeah. Yeah, and with uh, just a follow up on that, Danielle, with the with the tornado and you know the severe weather, the severe thunderstorms and tornadoes, uh, you really need the fuel for any kind of storm like that is is warm, humid, or hot, humid air. That's what you right. need. You absolutely need that. You know, now in the springtime, you have some other factors that sort of outweigh that, and you don't need it to be ninety degrees with a dew point of seventy five. It might be seventy with a dew point of 58. And that's enough to get a thump because you have other factors it, it, it near the surface that's necessary, but you also need colder air aloft and you need a lot of wind aloft. And so you could have the warm, humid or hot, humid conditions in late summer, like now, but you don't get as much of the severe weather. You don't get as much of the tornadoes. Why? Because generally speaking, there are exceptions. You have less wind. The winds aloft aren't as strong now as they are back in April and May and June. And the temperatures aloft are usually at their warmest point now. Um, so again, there's exceptions to the rule, but you kind of need the both to interact with each other, the low level, warm, humid or hot, humid air, 
and you need a lot of wind aloft and, and turning of the wind speed, uh, wind direction and so forth. And you need those colder temps aloft. You need that contrast, that clash, like Danielle was talking about. To listen to the full episode, just click the links below. And never miss a podcast by subscribing to Everything Under the Sun on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. New episodes every Friday. <laughs>